In 2014, a family of five purchased what they thought was their dream home. But before they could move in, they received a series of threatening anonymous letters from someone who claimed to be observing their new home. Today, we look at the unsettling mystery of the Watcher House. This is Red Web. All right, so this all started in June of 2014. We have the Broadus family, including Maria, Derek, and their three children. They purchased this home, a six-bedroom home, in the quiet town of Westfield, New Jersey. The home that they purchased was built in 1905, so we got a historic house on our hands, and it went for about $1.3 million. Nice big home, nice area. Yes, very aesthetically pleasing. But, you know, before fully moving in, they plan on doing some renovations to the home. Their three children often came and played in the backyard. The family's around while they're painting and remodeling and whatever. Okay, so they already own the house. They got the house. They closed on the house, yes. And now, got it. actually, on June 5th, this was three days after the sale closed, is where this really all starts to kick off. Ooh. Derek is painting at the house that evening, and at around 10 p.m., he goes outside to check the mail. And in the mailbox, there was an envelope marked with thick lettering and bad handwriting that simply read, the new owner. Inside, upon opening that, he found a terrifying typed letter, Dearest new neighbor at 657 Boulevard, allow me to welcome you to the neighborhood. 657 Boulevard has been the subject of my family for decades now, and as it approaches its 110th birthday, I have been put in charge of watching and waiting for its second coming. My grandfather watched the house in the 1920s, and my father watched it in the 1960s. It is now my time. Do you know the history of this house? Do you know what lies within the walls of 657 Boulevard? Why are you here? I will find out. Do you need to fill the house with young blood I requested? Better for me. Was your old house too small for a growing family? Or was it greed to bring me your children? Once I know their names, I will call to them and draw them to me. There are hundreds and hundreds of cars that drive by 657 Boulevard each day. Maybe I'm in one. Look at all the windows you can see from 657 Boulevard. Maybe I'm in one. Look out any of the many windows in 657 Boulevard at all the people who stroll by each day. Maybe I am one. At the bottom of the letter signed in cursive font is the mystery's namesake, The Watcher. This obviously caused a lot of alarm in in Derek. So he talks to the police for a little bit, and then he obviously goes back home, their previous home, where he informed his wife, Maria, and together they thought, well, let's contact the previous owners, John and Andrea Woods, and see if they have received anything from the Watcher before. Because it sounds like this is a generational thing from the 2060s to now. And the Woods claimed that they had never received any threatening letters until days before they moved out on May 26th of 2014. This was their first and only letter. Both families went to report these letters to the police, who told them not to share the incident with their neighbors in case any of the neighbors were the watcher. And so two weeks later, on June 18th, the Broadduses still hadn't fully moved in, but they were continuing to work, and they received yet another letter. Now, this letter had a few excerpts that I'm going to read here. Quote, 657 Boulevard is anxious for you to move in. It has been years and years since the young blood ruled the hallways of the house. Have you found all the secrets it holds yet? Will the young blood play in the basement, or are they too afraid to go down there alone? I would be very afraid if I were them. It is far away from the rest of the house. If you were upstairs, you would never hear them scream. This time, the watcher also included the birth order of the children and knew their nicknames and recalled hearing the couple call their names very loudly. The watcher wrote that they saw their children, their daughter in particular, painting on an easel on the front porch and asked, is she the artist of the family? The watcher also asked who lived in each room. Quote, all of the windows and doors in 657 Boulevard allow me to watch you and track you as you move through the house. End quote. So at this point, the family put a hold on moving anything else into the new house, choosing to stay at Maria's parents, ultimately while not living in it. Now on July 18th, precisely a month after the previous letter, the watcher noticed the delay and wrote a few things, and I'll just read a few snippets. Where have you gone to? 657 Boulevard is missing you. 
And six months after purchasing the home on Boulevard, they decided, okay, we've had enough. We got to get out of here. They started trying to sell it. At this point, they're saying, we got to do whatever we got to do. We're going to tear down this dream home. We're going to replace it with two smaller homes. Maybe we can do this as a, a rental property. But the planning board unanimously rejected their proposal on January of 2017. Later that year, the Broadduses managed to find someone willing to rent what became known as the Watcher House. But the lease included a clause that would allow the renters to leave if the Watcher sent yet another letter. But only two weeks after these renters moved in, mm. they received the last letter from the Watcher. The letter was once again addressed to Maria and Derek, the owners of the home, not the renters. Let's dive into what this final letter had to say to Maria and Derek. Violent winds and bitter cold. To the vile and spiteful Derek and his wench of a wife, Maria. You wonder who the Watcher is? Turn around, idiots. I watched you as you watched from the dark house in an attempt to find me. Telescopes and binoculars are wonderful inventions. My soldiers of the boulevard followed my orders to a T. They carried out their mission and saved the soul of 657 Boulevard with my orders. All hail the Watcher. Maybe a car accident. Maybe a fire. Maybe something as simple as a mild illness that never seems to go away but makes you feel sick day after day after day after day after day. Maybe the mysterious death of a pet. Loved ones suddenly die. Planes and cars and bicycles crash, bones break. You are despised by the house. And the Watcher won. In August of 2019, the Broadduses were finally able to sell 657 Boulevard. And that concludes the story of The Watcher House. Check out Red Web wherever you listen to podcasts, where Alfredo and I will dive further into the details as well as some of the theories behind the mystery. So check it out. 